Hi. So, Sunday the 19th of April. Um, tuna day vlog. So, it's going to be on the theme of the Elegy Etude again by Don John. Um, I recorded it in its entirety yesterday. However, due to the vagaries of the internet, it still hasn't actually uploaded it to YouTube. Despite the fact that it's been uploading for almost 24 hours, which kind of tells you how slow my internet is currently working. So, um, I wanted to record it again, this time warts and all. Well, not that yesterday wasn't. Um... But if I go wrong, I'm going to try and keep going because that's what would have to happen in a performance, wouldn't it? Um, so that's the etude and that's what I will be playing today. So the, it seems the grey weather has passed. It's um, beautiful out there. Um, I have not made it outside yet. Um, had a few things to catch up on. Had a Zoom meeting this morning, which was nice. Nice to, nice to hear everyone. Um, and um, catch up with a, a few people. Um, didn't have a great night last night. I have to say, night's rest. Uh, barely slept. Purely because it was my own stupid fault. Um, I hadn't realised that the chemist. My local chemist was was not opening at the weekends during this lockdown. Um, so I ran out of medication uh, on Friday night. Um, so, which, w when that happens, it means that I don't sleep. Um, so, yeah, so another night of that to look forward to. Can't wait. Um... And then I can get my medication tomorrow. However, if it does happen again tonight, then I am getting a new electric whisk mixer. So I can do some baking, if nothing else, because mine blew up um, a little while ago. And uh, yeah, so I thought now was the perfect time to get one. It was also in the sale, which is which is even better. And I find I find baking quite therapeutic. So I have a blueberry and lemon loaf uh, that I am going to bake, I think, in the next couple of days, if not tonight. Um, <sighs> so yeah, so today kind of got off on the wrong foot. And it would also seem that the pollen count is quite high. So any of my hay fever suffering friends, I don't know if you noticed it today, but my hay fever's, my hay fever's really bad. So I don't know whether yours is. So I'm sick of blowing my nose. Um... Uh, yeah, and itchy eyes. Um, I would normally put my glasses on, but I haven't been outside yet. And um, I need to wear sunglasses when I'm outside because I have quite sensitive eyes. Um, and I don't have prescription sunglasses. So, um, and I will be doing that when I come home, I think. Um, just like my eyes, my, you know, eyes are quite scratchy today. Uh, I, I wear contact lenses. Um, so, yeah. So today I wanted to talk about musical conductors as opposed to the electrical kind. Um, and give a few people, a few, a few very special people, a mention who have shaped my, my musical career, I think. My musical, yeah, uh, even since before it became a career. My musical life, I suppose. Um, because without these people, we would all be in a bit of a mess because everyone needs some sort of leader in an ensemble to, to keep it all together. So I think the first person to mention is Colin Parfit who was my high school music teacher. 
fantastic teacher. Um, so patient, um, very encouraging, very humble. And if he's watching, he'll probably be really embarrassed that I've just said those nice things about him. But it's true. And anyone that go that went to a certain high school in my area will undoubtedly know who Colin Prophet is. Um, and I have to say that he's also now become a very good friend and... Uh, plays in a band that, that we're, we're both in together. Um, so without Colin, um, thank you very much, because I would not be doing a job that I love had it not been for you and Ted Milner, who is the next person on my list. So Ted was also my primarily my flute teacher at school. And um, I have to say, I wasn't really very good at school. Um, I got to about grade four, and th th that's okay. But, you know, it's not really brilliant. I loved music, love music, as anyone who knows me knows. But I really wasn't... I, I kind of um, bluffed my way through a lot of it. Didn't quite grasp the whole how how to count rhythms properly and stuff um somebody in fact somebody mentioned in a meeting this morning you don't understand the subject properly until you find yourself having to teach it or find yourself teaching it um and i've said this to several of my students over the years when they said oh they, they just don't understand counting and um I didn't know how to explain it until I suddenly found myself teaching it. Um, so Ted Milner was also um, conductor of the Chester Wind Band when I started there. Um, did a phenomenal job for Chester Wind Band. Um, which brings me to a th another conductor, Ian Robinson, um, who was also my music theory teacher. How he had the patience to do that, I really don't know. Um, and certainly had it not been for those three, Colin, Ted and Ian, um, I would not be doing what I do today. Um, so huge thank you to, to all of those. Um, other really good conductors who I and I have to say, all the people that I mention, I've thoroughly enjoyed being in whichever ensemble it is that they've conducted. Eddie Pickering. Um, Eddie's great. Um, no nonsense, no messing. You, you, know, you know exactly where you are. Um, but has... Um, has a very good way of, of dealing with... Well, he, d he did when he conducted the... Uh, the, the police band that I play with and uh, he would never pick on anyone by name so it would always be clarinets your such and such or your out or your flat or shop or whatever it might be or can we go from here whatever which which is great if there's more than one of you in your section and as there was always only me for the vast majority of our time together in the band It was it was always it was always me, um, but I learned such a lot from Eddie. So thank you, Eddie. And he also had the patience, I have to say, um, was my sounding board on more than one occasion for various graded exams that I did, um, and uh, especially when he he really doesn't like saxophone, and very kindly listened to my. I think at least grade six and grade eight saxophone pieces so thank you Eddie for putting up with that and I got distinctions on both both occasions so you know you contributed to that so thank you um other conductors Jeff Coward fantastic um 
Mold Wind Band, Mold Town Concert Band to give it its full title. I always describe Jeff as the Duracell bunny because um, he's, he's in his early 70s, I think now. And um, he, he literally is like the Duracell bunny. He just bounces all over the place taking rehearsal. Um, it's so much fun. I absolutely love the band. The The band is made up with um, a whole range of, of uh, ages, um, uh, right through to, I think, how old is our oldest, oldest member? 90? I think 90. And the youngest is probably early 20s. I don't think we've got anyone. Younger than that at the moment. A uh, huge range of talented, of talented people from ex-military people to um, brass band players to wind ensemble players, pit musicians, all sorts. Um, fantastic. So, thank you, Jeff. I know his cousin will be watching John Downs. A special mention to you and Jenny. So, um, yeah. Love Jeff. Uh, Jeff is also my uh, long-suffering accompanist. He did my ATCL with me and is doing my LTCL. Loves the Schubert Trockner Blumen variations. Thanks, Jeff. You know you love me. Um, which leads me on to another fabulous conductor and uh, hilarious. It, it was just so much fun. So Jeff and uh, and Maggie um, sometimes go out to Australia to see their um, uh, their son, and it was not long after I joined the band a couple of years ago that uh, they were going on such a venture and uh, needed a deputy standing conductor. So a fabulous, fabulous musician and nice, nice man by the name of Guy Booth, came and took our merry band for six weeks. And it was just hilarious. It was just brilliant. I had so much fun. Um, I don't know whether, I don't know whether he did. Maybe you can tell me that guy whether or not you did. Um, but, um, so thank you, Guy. I have very fond memories of those six weeks. It was just great. Uh, then orchestrally, orche orchestrally, even. Um, second time in an orchestra, but first time as flute, as a flute player. Um, is where I met my current teacher, Andrew Edwards. Poor man. Um, so really learned a lot. Really learned a lot in his conducting. Um... From Andrew and then I've learned so much um, as his student seriously um, it's like learning to play the flute again but at diploma <laughs> standards it's it's like yeah uh, but it's absolutely fantastic and I love it and so thank you Andrew um, and then most recently um, when Eddie retired as conductor for the for the police band, um, we I consider it um, a blessing in that we have the fabulous Gavin Holden. Um, again, just so much for how he can keep a straight face. Sometimes I really don't know. He has this deadpan face. What what's going on behind? behind that face I don't know half the time I know what I think sometimes when some of us drop some clangers myself included um but it's so encouraging um as well so and and has become a, a, a good friend so thank you very much to all the people that I've mentioned before and all the other many pit orchestra conductors I've had. I didn't, I never thought I would ever get to play for a musical theatre show. 
um, and it's just brilliant fun. Um, one, you work with some super talented people in the pit with you. Super talented people on stage. You would not get me on a stage acting or singing in front of people if you paid me a million pounds. Never. How these people do it, I have no idea. Stick me in a pit at the front, underneath a stage. Absolutely fine, but incredible incredibly talented people so thank you to all of them which leads me on to playing the elegy because i think i've waffled enough but i, I can't i really wanted to get all that out because i think it's important to acknowledge the people that have shaped our musical pathways um and music is such such good therapy it seriously is. Um, even if you're having a really rough day, um, whether that's that's mentally, you're struggling with things mentally, especially things as they are at the moment. Things are very stressful, aren't they, with one thing and another. Families are, I think, starting to get on, possibly get on each other's nerves at times. People are frustrated because they can't go out and socialise with their friends, especially because it's beautiful weather. And the thing that you want to do is go for a drive out down the coast and sit on a beach or um, hang out with your mates and, and you can't do that. So it, it is incredibly frustrating. Um, but music is such good therapy. So if you are struggling with a bit of isolation stress, then if you play a musical instrument or if you have one lurking that hasn't seen the light of day for a while, then why not? drag it out of its case and, and just have a tootle on something or listen to something or play something and sing your head off and you will find that oh yes okay i can i can deal with whatever the day has to okay yes I, I've, I've got this so seriously the best free therapy you could you could want and i am so thankful to all those people that have made made me into the musical person that i am so here is the donjon hopefully without too many mistakes but we'll see bearing in mind that i have literally had maybe an hour of sleep
and I know that note was too long at the end, but I actually enjoyed getting it crocheting. Thank you for bearing with all the waffle. My longest video so far, but I did, I did feel it was it was important to say all those things. So enjoy the rest of your Sunday, or it's quarter past three, so it could well be, well be Wednesday by the time you actually see this. Um, please take care. Please try and keep positive. Um, and do check in on people. Make sure that you know, they know that you care. Um, so I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.